Okay, so uh, if I can paraphrase a question I was asked, uh, it was on um, having willingness to go for the high states, uh, but not enjoying the low states. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can definitely. Yeah, Th there's various ways. So I, I mean, I sort of teach in this group two practices or three practices: of the course of miracles, um, feel the feelings, uh, or the letting go process, and the observer. And, they're very, and in terms of, you know, what can happen with, uh, um, I, I should have talked to about myself, you know, is this thing of like, oh, it's nice when I'm bliss, in bliss, but if there's suddenly some fear or, or something or a difficult situation or whatever it is, that's not enjoyable. But the thing for me uh, is, if there is something in consciousness that is choosing one to be better than the other, i.e. is making a judgment, like being in bliss is better than, I mean there's a few things, like one of these things <clears throat> for me as a, as a spiritual seeker is like to have what I call unconditional surrender, uh, to have an experience of unconditional surrender and what was, what was really really helpful to me uh, this is to stop the dualistic split of have I done something wrong, why am I not in bliss right now uh, or have I, you know, is the thing of like, what was really, really helpful uh, was when I was listening to Hawkins' teachings, is that even if you're doing a lot of spiritual work and you're in a state of bliss, you can't, it's unseeable what karma may hit you at any point, yeah. <clears throat> and it doesn't mean anything's wrong, it's sometimes like when you, when you do some spiritual work, you go into these very high sublime states, but then because you're in those high sublime states, you're now ready to deal with something you weren't ready to deal with before. And so a tranche of karma can suddenly come up and hit you. And it's the thing of like, if I'm going to, I'm going to have to use dualistic language, if I'm surrendering to grace, if I'm surrendering to the infinite, then whatever comes up is it's not to have an ego reaction to whatever's coming up. Like, uh, uh, like I talk, I talk to a lot of spiritual students and they'll say like I've been a, a good boy or a good girl and I've been doing all my spiritual practice and I feel shit today. Uh, so, you know, like, uh, you know, so if I, do all, if I do all the good things I'm supposed to be doing and tick all the boxes, then I shouldn't have a bad day. Um, and it's like, now this thing of like sometimes when you, when you dissolve things and you do spiritual work, you go into very high states, but then something can come up deeper at some point that needs to be resolved. And it's not to have like a, a, a good or bad or a dualistic or it shouldn't happen or it should happen or I, I've done something wrong but to just accept everything that comes non-judgmentally without thought and to allow, you know, it's like if you, if you surrender because as soon as you, as soon as the ego labels something as good and bad and even if the ego pr has a preference for something it creates what I call resistance. You know, when you resist the now, when you resist what is, then uh, when the ego says, I prefer this in accordance to that, or this shouldn't happen, I'd rather that happen, it creates resistance to releasing. So whatever comes up is whatever comes up. But you, one doesn't want to have what I call uh, ego editing of the phenomena that are coming up in whatever sequence, if you like. So it's like, okay, I'm, I'm doing all my spiritual practice, I'm doing my Course in Miracles every five minutes or every 15 minutes, and, I'm in a, and there's, it seems to be witnessing a state of bliss, and then suddenly this huge fear you know, comes in. But it's like, it's like the surrendering of the labeling of all the experience that shows up and is witnessed and experience, so that one doesn't allow the ego to say good or bad, or this shouldn't happen, or I've been a good boy, and I've been doing my Course in Miracles not, you know, every 10 minutes, and this shouldn't happen. So you, you just, whatever shows up, you see, both the observer and the field of feelings practice I teach, both do that in different ways. So it's like, if you're doing field of feelings, it, it stops the ego saying good or bad and whatever it's coming back, because you're not allowed to label anything that's arising in the now. So let's say, <clears throat> There's, a, there's fear in the stomach and you allow yourself to experience that, you're doing feel the feelings, and it, and it starts to dissolve away and then there's just bliss. But then uh, there's bliss for a while and then suddenly some anger suddenly comes in from nowhere. 
So again, if the anger comes in, you're allowing that to be experienced, but you're letting go of the, of the thought of good or bad, or this shouldn't happen or that. You're just dissolving it, and you're allowing that experience to be experienced without any kind of thought, editing, good or bad, should happen or shouldn't happen. You're just allowing everything to materialize without <coughs> an ego label saying this should or shouldn't happen. Now, if, if you allow the ego to think and say it should or shouldn't happen, or it's good or bad, or I prefer bliss and I don't prefer this, or even to label bliss and fear is a label. You see, it's just allowing what is without any form of thinking. Also, as you, as you allow the thinker to emerge, it creates duality. As soon as you allow attention to go to thought when, shall we say, sensations or vibrations are rising in the now, as soon as you give attention to thought, the I starts to... Um, the, the idea of there's a me doing the process starts to exist. And as soon as the me starts to exist because you've identified with thought, out of that me then comes, well, the me doesn't like this feeling in compared to that. Does that make sense? Whereas if you're not allowing anything to go to the thought, or you're detaching from the thought immediately, not allowing the head to make a label, good or bad, this or that, or I don't like this, or there's a me that doesn't like mm. this, because that happens as soon as you allow thought. You give power, you give attention to the thought. Then things are just happening. It's what I call a, an allowing process, but there's no you who's allowing it, because you're not giving, see? So that stops the idea of uh, uh, this dissonance to experiencing what is. Because there can only be a dissonance to experiencing what is if there's a me, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. As soon as I allow thoughts, yeah. Okay, so, so I don't want to allow, so that's one way to dissolve the idea of a me or an ego saying, I like bliss, but I don't like working through fear. So that's one way. Or the observer is another, th another thing to, to do spiritual dissonance. So if I'm in my ego, then my ego would say, I like bliss and, and, and flow, and I don't like it when I ha have thoughts and fear. So that's what my ego would say. It'd go, and it's like there's a me that like, that's going back into memory saying bliss is nice, but fear and thinking is not nice. Mm. But then that's, that means right now in this moment, if I'm having this spiritual dissonance, like God give me bliss now, don't give me the fear and thought thinking now, because I prefer this. That means there's a me in dissonance. Does that make sense? Mm. So if there's a me in dissonance saying, oh, this emotion and these thoughts... Uh, I, pr I prefer the bliss and no thoughts. There is a me in dissonance to what is. So th with the, if there's a me in dissonance to what's showing up now, like if it was pure sunny day or a cloudy rainy day, like if there's something on a blissful day, like there's no editing, but on a cloudy rainy day, I don't like this, I'm in dissonance, mm -hmm. then we go to the observer. We go to that which is observing the dissonance. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Suddenly there's a me saying, I don't like it because I, f I can experience the body and the thoughts and there's fear and there's horrible things happening. Um, but what's observing that? So does the observer have dissonance? And if the observer has dissonance, then, okay, so there is an observer, but this observer is still also slightly dissonant. <laughs> okay, okay, well, let's go to the observer of the dissonant observer. Is this observer in dissonance? And usually that observer isn't in dissonance. If it is in dissonance, then go to the witnesser of that observer. Then the observer or the witnesser, which is not interested in dissonance, and see if dissonance exists there. In that way, you, you, you dissolve the dualistic idea of resistance to what is. So resistance to what is, you know, like on a simple analogy, it's like, you know, if it's a sunny, clear day, it's like it might, might, the ego might go quiet. But if it's like raining and cloudy and, and pelting down, suddenly the ego goes, well, I don't like this, I like to, that. But what's observing that? Is the observer of a sunny day and a cloudy day, does it care whether it's sunny or cloudy? Find out if that observer cares whether it has a preference. For, is, in, is the observer of a cloudy, rainy day having dissonance with a cloudy, rainy day in preference to a sunny day? Does the observer have that quality of having dissonance? Or having a preference, or preferring a this in accordance to that, you know, which are, which are the orchestration. You know, also if there's memory, like if there's memory in the moment, like let's say it's raining and pelting down, 
right now and something is saying oh but I preferred it when it was sunny and things were flowing then what observes memory and what observes preference yeah it does the observer of preferences have preference it does <coughs> the observer of memories experience memories so these are questions that dissolve the idea of a preference or, or there was a past that exists in the now. Does that make sense? So, you, so then what happens is the now or what is, is experienced without labeling or without an I trying to create an idea of a separation or, or even a past or a future to reference what is now. Uh, so you, you sort of implode it. The other thing I do, one of my favorite things, with whatever, exi whatever happens in the now, if there's tracking or if it's meaningful to my ego, then my, and it's a significant thing that keeps showing up, my thing is to disappear it. It's because it's meaningful. Things that keep, you know, if, if I don't like, um, what do I like? Like, I, mean, I did a lot of work on donuts, you see, like, you know, so it'd be like, you know, it's like, well, if, if every time there's a donut in the room, you know, my ego is tracking that and it's finding it meaningful, then it's a problem that if there's a donut in the room, it's a problem. Then I want to keep going to the observer. Is the observer of donuts interested in donuts? And if that observer is interested in donuts, then go to the observer of that donut. Does that donut, is that observer, and then that observer doesn't have interest in donuts. So if you keep doing that, eventually donuts disappear. Or if every time there's a donut, then I have the thought, hmm, that's yummy. And then there's this feeling like, oh, that'd be nice to eat that donut, you see. So then, okay, if I do the feel the feelings, let go of the thought, there's a me that wants to eat the donut. So don't give attention to the thought. And then feel out the energy until, it's, until there's nothing. When the energy is gone, that separation is gone, then suddenly there's no interest in the donut and there's no thought of the donut. Keep doing that until donuts have no, no meaning and then you transcend, you disappear the donuts. And then eventually, you know, you get to a place of transcendence, as long as you don't track the ego, where even if donuts are in the room, you wouldn't notice them. You know, so that's the, that's the thing you're doing. So, but you can also do that with ego things, which is what I'm saying. Like if there's an ego thing that says, I like this, I don't like that, or this is better, this is not better, then you can go to the observer, feel that dissonance out, you know, and disappear that. So that's the thing of an ego having preference. Like, the ego prefers, like, I'd like it if I was being a millionaire, but I don't like it if I don't have any money. Mm. But can you design, you know, that would be a dissonance. Or I like bliss days, I don't like fearful days. Or I like it if I don't have to do any spiritual work and I'm in bliss all the time. Mm. And that's a spiritual dissonance. Mm. 